Want to help support Juno Cigars? Two great ways to do it, smokeagoinshop.com and on Patreon. So click those links in the description below and help support this great cigar channel. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Joe with Juno Cigars, back for another review here on Black Friday. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. I definitely did. And to commemorate Black Friday 2022, we have HVC's annual release, the Black Friday for 2022. This year's iteration of the Black Friday by HVC, Rainier Lorenzo brought us a 55 by 50 Robusto Extra, utilizing Nicaraguan tobaccos for the long fillers, focusing primarily on, uh, what was it, uh, the Jalapa region. A little bit of Esteli fillers will be found in this blend, as well as an Esteli Nicaraguan binder. And then we have a Cuban seed Ecuadorian wrapper on the outside. Uh, one interesting note about this, Rainier Lorenzo, when he released the HVC uh, Black Friday 2022, he said that there was zero Lejero in this one, all Viso and Seco leaves instead. For those of you who don't know what that means, Lajero is the uh, leaves on the tobacco plant that are at the very top. They're the smallest leaves and they're also the leaves that get the most sun exposure and as a result have the most flavor strength and possibly the most nicotine strength. Viso and Seco grow lower on the plant, they're bigger leaves and they don't tend to have as much flavor. So I'm very interested to see how this particular blend smokes. But before we take a look, Let's take a look at what the cigar looks like, and it's very pretty. As I said before, five and a half by 50. Very nice looking wrapper leaf, a couple of prominent veins, but extremely tight seams. Classic HVC band work with a secondary band for 2022. Simple double cap on the top. It's got a light little oil sheen on it and a very nice and even roll. Pack does look very good with a couple of noticeable gaps. Pre-light aromas, ooh, we've got some musty wood, some barnyard earth, some leather, and something that reminds me of like chocolate chip cookie dough. And off the foot, I'm getting a mixture of dry raisin, dark chocolate, and earth. All right, let's go ahead and get this one cut. Check out the cold draw. Cold draw's got a very nice feeling resistance to it. There's some more dried fruit. Little bits of salt in there and a touch of some caramel sweetness. And some leather as well. All right, let's go ahead and start toasting this up, see what we can find out. Very good draw on the first puff. And a surprising amount of black pepper spice off of those first few puffs. There's some saltiness. Hmm. There's a dried fig sort of a flavor in there, but it's not particularly sweet. Hmm. There's a toffee sweetness coming through after that initial dried fruit sweetness. Neither one of those are super sweet, but they just have a little bit of sweetness to them. Smoke texture is medium full. It's got an oily, slightly chewy texture. And there's some leather nuances on the draw as well. Getting a lot of black pepper grit and leather on the finish at this point. All right, let this go until I get a little further into the first third. I'll see you then. All right, we're 10 minutes in, well into the first third. Got a very nice looking burn line. Somewhat slanted, but a nice looking white ash. Still medium full. Still got a lot of oil and chewiness to the smoke texture. And the flavors have gotten very interesting pretty quickly. We're getting a very rich spicy oak sort of flavor. We've got some oatmeal with brown sugar and cinnamon, which is really interesting. It's very warm 
and it uh, it is one of those things that just it feels very satisfying when you taste those flavors especially on a cooler night like tonight we're also getting still a good amount of black pepper but also like a chili powder spice as well as some really interesting fruit notes that sometimes remind me of like a uh, really tart bean cherry and sometimes like a really rich full-bodied red wine very interesting flavor notes there i don't get sort of red wine flavors in there and it's not a tannic red wine it's a very fruity full-bodied red wine flavor uh, and that is just a really interesting contrast with that oatmeal and cinnamon and brown sugar uh, on the retro hill now we're getting a lot of oak cinnamon and really <laughs> a bright red apple sort of flavor through the retro very interesting gamut of flavors and i am kind of surprised at how much spice i'm still picking up given that there is no lajero in this blend all right i'm liking this one a lot so far it's very interesting and it's very unique let this go until i get about halfway through the cigar I'll see you then All right, we're about 30 minutes in, just about at the halfway point. Burn is basically perfect. A very nice burn line, a nice ribbed white ash. Smoke output and draw are still very, very good. Still medium full bodied. Texture of the smoke has gotten a little more airy, but effectively about the same as where it was before. Flavors have gotten very, very good, very bright and dynamic. So we started to get some sweet milk chocolate coming through. We started getting a red licorice, some sweet buttery almond notes coming through, some applewood, and that applewood is definitely forward in the spectrum of flavors that you get on the draw. Um, also getting some cinnamon on the draw and on the retrohale. Got a nice healthy amount of white pepper little bits of brown sugar sweetness, cinnamon, light citrus, and plenty of that spicy oak. I wouldn't quite call it a gritty black pepper spice anymore, but there is definitely some spice coming through on that retrohale, and it lingers on the finish on the draw as well. I am definitely surprised how much flavor pop and spice you're getting out of the cigar in the absence of Lajero tobacco. I said it once before in this review, I'm going to say it again, I was surprised. Uh, really do like how bright yet full the flavors are. Um, there is definitely some fruit nuances with that apple and red licorice and the almond, which kind of borders on cherry a lot of the time. A lot of the time people will confuse cherry with almond. They are pretty closely related. Um, obviously the almond notes aren't going to have quite that crispness and that brightness that uh, fruit flavors have, like the cherry. So I'm definitely calling this more of a sweet almond flavor at this point, whereas before I was definitely getting tart red cherries and those red wine notes. Not really getting the super fruity notes anymore, but there's still sort of that fruity brightness that exists here on the draw still. All right, let this go until I get towards the end of the cigar. We'll see you then. Fifty-five minutes in, down to the end here. Still got about another little less than an inch left. Flavors starting to get a little different now. Starting to get a little bit more into that wine category again. Starting to get some more sort of that deep cab sav sort of wine flavors. Also some more reminiscent notes of the red licorice. Starting to get some cherry wood. And that cinnamon is still kind of lingering in there with little hints of that red apple. Lots of spicy oak still present on the draw, and the almond is kind of mixing every now and then with the cherry. It's going back and forth between almond and cherry. Again, I mentioned this before, those two notes are very closely related. The nutty notes of the almond tend to be a little, I'm trying to describe the difference between almond and cherry. Cherry has a little bit more brightness. Almond has a little, I guess, more of a woody character to it, just a generic, more nutty character to it, and it goes back and forth from time to time on the draw. On the retrohale. It's a 
much smoother retrohale now. Still get some white pepper, but there's a musty cedar coming through now. And I forgot to mention earlier, uh, towards the end of the second third, I was getting more milk chocolate with the cherry. It reminded me a lot of like a chocolate covered cherry. This is a great addition to the Black Friday lineup. It's an annual release, and every time they have a new Black Friday, it's different from the last year by a lot. This is no exception. This is a big departure from last year's Black Friday. I enjoyed every single Black Friday I've had. 2019 was particularly good in my opinion. 2020 was pretty good. 2021 was better than 2021. This one's better than both. I'm not sure if it's as good as the 2019, but it is definitely different, and it is definitely something that I'll be smoking again. A great uh, entry from the HVC Boutique Factory. Very much looking forward to seeing what that fact will be bringing in the years to come. I love what Rainier Lorenzo does. I love what he brings to the table. HVC is a great brand that has a lot of different varieties of flavor experiences, and it really does showcase some great flavor profiles from Nicaraguan tobacco. Thank you so much for joining me for this review. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Click that icon in the bottom right corner if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Rumble, just look for the subscribe button towards the top right of the screen. Don't forget to follow Jonas Cigars on Instagram, and please don't forget to follow me on Cigar Public. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Till next time, smoke a good one.